Hey you guys, Rick here. Good to talk to you again. I know I've been pretty crummy with my YouTube videos, not very regular at all. Part of the reason is I've been creating videos, video series and games and stuff. I've been doing a lot of time in Unity. I wanted to show you something that I think is really interesting that I've been doing recently in the course that I've just uh, just launched just recently with my good buddy Ben. We've been working on this course that is part of the uh, remake of this course here, the Complete Unity Developer, which I'm sure quite a few of you guys have participated in, has had a couple of hundred thousand students already. We have revamped it, redone it, re-updated it, made it modern and awesome and excellent. Uh, and it's just launched recently. So I thought because I'm getting my hands super dirty with it, I wanted to show you guys some Unity stuff, but some game design stuff that I'm putting, actively putting into that course right now. And what I want to do is talk to you about, here we're making this game, let me just play it for you, show you a little bit about it. Uh, I'll maximize on play so that we make it nice and big. Here we go, boom, and it's basically a simple rocket fly, there's gravity, rotation, collision if you bang into stuff. Uh, we haven't implemented our, no, haven't implemented our death collision and stuff in this particular build at the moment, particles, all that kind of thing. But the idea is it's just fun and simple, simple mechanic, and from there, you can build so much of a game. You basically, at the moment, is go from A to B. I've got just a fixed camera. We could do a follow camera. Lots and lots we can do. The idea is, of from a, a learning point of view, is we're teaching people the core and the fundamentals, but then enough, giving you enough design levers so you can go in whichever direction is most appropriate for you and, and to make this into a, a polished game. But the point is, make something that's simple. The core is interesting and engaging. And you know what, when we play this, uh, I know looking at it, it might not seem like a lot, but it's super fun. Just get, getting everything nice and coordinated and flying around and, you know, making levels for it and stuff. So the core mechanic's really cool and it's simple, which as indies, it's very important to have a simple core mechanic that you can then build on if people like it. And something I've been thinking about is how can I keep a fixed camera without having to do a scroll camera, which I tried, it was okay, it made the levels more interesting, but I think it made the mechanic a little bit less cool, because the, the the rocket sort of just stayed in the middle of the screen as you flew around, it wasn't quite as engaging, I think. So I want to have it like this, but I don't want it to get repetitive and samey, I want it to be a little bit more dynamic and dramatic, and I want it to be different. I talk a lot about this, you guys know this, if you've been following my stuff, you know, I talk about that a lot, we're going to make it different, remarkable. And so one of the things I was playing around with was lighting. If you think about it, we've got this player, and within Unity, if you guys are Unity guys, you'll know that you can child something to the player. And I think just this one concept is super powerful to, pa to child something to the parent. If we get in there and say, what if we parent a particle effect? Well then, you know, we'll have a particle effect follower around. What else could we parent, well, child, I keep saying parent, what else could we child to the rocket? Something I thought about was lighting. What about lighting? If we go in there and create a new light, a spotlight, point the spotlight upwards, rotate it up like that. I'll do it a little bit fast and loose for now. I won't get it super polished and super awesome. Just want to show you guys an idea. And my thought process as a designer, as a developer, as an indie, always looking for how can I make this a little bit different, a little bit interesting, a little bit unusual. So if I make the range a little bit longer and open the angle a little bit more, pump up the intensity just for now. So I've got a spotlight in there. It's not doing a lot at present because I need to go and turn off my, or turn down my directional light. Just make that a little bit less, if I click on it, directional light, make it a little prominent. And then my spotlight hopefully will get a bit more of relevance to it. I think it might not be bright intense enough. There we go. Okay, and just that alone, because it's parent, sorry, childed, ugh, wrong way again. Because the rocket ship is the parent of the spotlight, it's going to follow it around. It's going to retain its transform and its rotation. So you can see I've got this kind of neat mechanic here. Now, the world is still too bright in my opinion. I'm gonna to go to lighting, just turn this down, the intensity multiplier down yonder. This is the lighting that's coming from the sky box. And we'll turn this down, environment reflections as well. You know, I'm gonna go not too far. You want it to be able to see a little bit. But the idea here is the game now goes from being, I can see exactly where the, whoop, the level is. Okay, I might need to give myself a bit more light uh, on my spotlight here. It goes from being, uh, oh, I can see what I need to do and let's go do it 
to being uh, how exactly should I do it and where do I go and what am I doing here? I think I know what the problem is. I need to put a couple of lights on my, my ship so I can actually see where I am. I can see the spotlight, I can't see myself. So then to go in and put a, let's see, we'll create a light, point light. Just put the point light somewhat near, like I said, I'm just being fast and loose. This is the idea with this mechanic, this idea, I wanna see within maybe mm, half an hour, whether this is something I wanna invest more time in. So rather than going and building it out and building it out and building it out, and then saying, hmm, does it work or not work? I just wanna be a little bit faster and looser with this. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna duplicate that point light and put a couple of them above, just around the guy. This will illuminate the world right next to my rocket as well, which I think could be good. Give it a little bit of that glow so it's not like I'm bumping into things randomly. There we go. And it's constrained to the Z axis. That's why it's only going along here. It's not going in the back, background or foreground. Okay, so it's now nice and bright. As I go along here, see how the game, whoa, the game feels way different to what it did before because I'm not exactly sure where I should be going. You could take this and say, hmm, this mechanic, this approach, what if we gave it a bit of a horror theme? You know, you're, you're lost, you're on your spaceship, where am I going, I'm not sure where. And then with that theme, it makes the game feel totally different. Like, bloom, I know I'm bumping into things in, well, we don't have to have it this way, but the idea is that when you bump into things, you would crash and explode. So the game becomes, I think, a lot more threatening, a lot more difficult, just by this one little mechanic of putting in a spotlight. Now I can put in some thrusters, some particle effects on the back of my rocket so that there's a little bit of backward spotlight as well. But one of the things, whoop, and see I've gone off kilter here, one of the things that we really liked, but we're wondering how do we get it in there, was a, a kind of a somersault maneuver like that. And when I was talking with Ben, if you guys know Ben, Ben Tristam, he's awesome, he's the, the programming all of these games and uh, I'm sure a gazillion of you guys have been students of his from Udemy. He was talking about, well, what if we have an achievement where if you do that, diddling, you get an achievement, which is okay, but that's coding and scope and extra feature and extra work. What if we just get there and say, the fact that I've just plopped a spotlight on there means that the player's gonna be wanting to do that sort of maneuver all the time, just organically. So that was the logic of this. Okay, so just a super quick idea of what we could add to a game. And if you're working on your game and you're trying to come up with ideas, take an existing mechanic like this. This is just flying a rocket. It's nothing nothing that's not been seen before. It's based upon Thrust, a game from you know many, many years ago. It's also the same sort of mechanic of asteroids, although asteroids doesn't have gravity. This has got some gravity in it. It's the same sort of mechanic but we've gone and looked for what can we add that might be a little bit different or interesting. A few of you might say, no, nah, I don't really want to do that light thing on, on your game. What is it? What could you do? Can you, can you child something to your player as they're running around? Can you play with lighting? Uh, could it be the terrain? Could it be things are very close? What about camera? Camera is something else that we can play with. We grab the camera and bring it way, way, way out. Then what sort of game does that feel like when you do that? So that's a little bit of the, the extreme tuning that I'm a huge fan of is just, move things in, move things out, move them around, play with it. And rather than saying, I've got to go and make a whole new feature, because once I've made this feature, my game will be good, try to do it with tuning, try to do it with the simple tools, particularly if you're in Unity that's got just so many tools already, try to do it with the tools first before uh, creating a whole bunch of code and a whole bunch of, of framework and a whole bunch of architecture. Try to find something quick and simple. This is the Crossy Road philosophy. If you hear those guys talk about what they're up to, I, I met them at a conference and they were saying that I think it was five weeks maximum they gave themselves. It had to be one simple mechanic. The whole game had to be made in five weeks is what I'm saying. And by doing that, they came up with something that was simple, engaging, and, and they put constraints on what they were allowed to do or not allowed to do. And you guys can do the same. When you're working on your games, instead of taking two years to make your games, maybe you can take uh, two months or three months to get your games out there, or even two weeks if you work really hard at it. Okay, so you know what? As always, I love to hear from you guys. Love to hear your comments. Uh, I think I'll have a discount code, coupon, in the link below for the course. And if you've checked it out already, let me know what you think about it. I'd love to hear from you guys as always. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for all you guys who are like, hey Rick, are you still alive? I am still alive. Just been working super hard on making games, which is what we love to do. Cool, great stuff. I will talk to you guys again, hopefully in the very near future.